Good afternoon, everybody. Today is our EBS technical assistance session, and we are going to be talking about layoff aversion and Levi Vera from the middle of the state <laughs> is going to lead our discussion today. So Levi, tell a little bit about yourself before you jump into the topic. Well, sure thing. Uh, thank you, Dee. Uh, my name is Levi Beer, and I'm part of the Illinois DCO Rapid Response Team. I represent local areas 4 and 15, and because of that, I participate in these Tuesday ETA sessions. Um, I think previously and since we've started, we've really focused on more uh, the technical aspects and how to do things in EBS. And so as the system's evolving and how are, we're evolving, we decided it'd also be a good idea to try to incorporate some of the processes and kind of create an open dialogue about some of the things we're doing in our areas and how we can best document those best practices in this system. So today we're going to be talking about the layoff aversion. And I'm calling this a layoff aversion primer because this is more of a test run. I feel like when we come out of quarters, we're going to really refine this and try to bring it out, you know, full strength. I wanted to try it out in this audience and see what kind of feedback and ideas you might have and see how you feel about this type of discussion about strategies and documenting them. So first when I figure out how to use this PowerPoint, it's different than I'm used to. Okay, so next slide. So I just mentioned the first the discussion. Um, really what we'd like to do here is start to open dialogue. Levi, yeah. can I interrupt you for just a moment? Your yeah. microphone, all of a sudden, it like it went dull. Let me see if I can adjust that. I'm almost there. All right, how's that sound now? Not much better. Okay. It sounds muffled, like. Like, do you have a piece of paper over the microphone by any chance? I don't, but do I sound better now? No. <laughs> what about now? That's better. Okay, that's much better. Yes. Okay. So hopefully that'll help now. All these technical difficulties, but yeah. Um, back to we talk about the purpose discussion. Um, basically to create an open dialogue and kind of spark some discussion and innovation in our practices. And with EBS being the system of record, hopefully using this as a library of best practices. So I'm gonna kind of walk through those processes today. Um, also kind of share our current efforts and strategies that we have in place. So with giving these presentations, hopefully we can kind of build a collaborative group to help share fresh ideas and come up with new strategies. And so just so everyone knows, um, everyone knows about 20 CFR 682.320. That's the technical name. It outlines the 10 strategies for layoff aversion. Um, US DOL put this out, but anyone who's looked at it or read it know there's not a lot of meat on those bones. Uh, if you even look online and try to find, you know, what do you do for layoff aversion? It, it, there's just not a lot there. So as a group, we decided, you know, let's talk about some of these strategies to the people that practice it in the field in Illinois and see what other ideas come up. And I'm gonna touch on every point on this list. It's not like I'm gonna go in order or I'm gonna call out when I've discussed it, but everything I talk about today is gonna incorporate all these ideas in kind of a use case practical manner. Um, when talking about layoff aversion, I think it's good to address the common layoff aversion misconceptions. When you talk to people that do not practice rapid response, or aren't part of the field staff, or even don't work with the customers. They have a lot of misconception about them. And one of them is layoff version just means stopping a layoff. Um, they also means it has to be a good salesman to persuade the company to give them these government jobs. And it's really just limited to talent transfer. And that's actually not true about layoff aversion. Uh, the reality of layoff aversion is your goal with layoff aversion is to try to minimize the time between the layoff and the new career. And so that's where you come up with these strategies. And some of these strategies involve active listening, which means you have to be opportunity driven, be able to identify opportunities when they come up during the process. And you have to understand that layoff aversion and wheel in general, everything we do, uh, relies heavily on the power of word of mouth. So you have to be a good listener, you have to be a good communicator, and you have to be able to identify those opportunities when they arise. So with layoff aversion, I tend to think it comes in a few different buckets, but some of the most important buckets you can think of is business-centric and then dislocated worker-centric. So one thing I think is good to point out is that layoff aversion is something difficult to do with the company once you've received a loan war notice or laid off. Uh, 
once they've sent that notice, once they've laid off, the decisions made. So often, you know, your efforts are going to be very difficult at that. I mean, one of the options I have it on here is WorkShare. Uh, WorkShare is a great program, but it's best suited for smaller companies because the goal of WorkShare is, yes, it does help the people keep their employment and also be able to take some UI. But the real benefit for the company is it just minimizes your UI rate increase. Um, unemployment is just like car insurance for companies. You know, if you get in a crash and use your insurance, your rate goes up. So when a company has layoffs and people file UI claims, that rate goes up. There's a lot of companies in Illinois that are constantly churning layoffs and constantly doing layoffs. So their rates are mapped out. So work share is not really of interest to them. So what you got to do is kind of be able to identify needs of businesses in these areas. And when I say that, one of the things I think about is your business service reps, rapid response reps, when you're looking at the local news, local media, local job postings, are you seeing any jobs that have been posted for long term? Like, is there a job that's been out there for a year, 18 months, and you hear, you know, that job just can't be filled? I mean, that's something you could look at as a possible income but worker training opportunity. Um, if the company has an open job and it's not filled, that means that company is not producing what they're supposed to be doing with that job. So being able to get someone in that position is actually a benefit for the company. And so this could be an opportunity for incumbent workers. So that's one way to think about and identify it. Uh, new businesses in the area. Trevor and I were talking the other day, you know, um, I can't remember, Frere Rocher, right? The little hazelnut chocolate things. They're building a factory here in Bloomington. And we're starting to see grants pop up. And I'm hearing from other people, you know, hey, we got a grant from Frere Rocher. Okay, so we're looking for assistance. Maybe that's time to reach out about OJT opportunities or apprenticeships. And I realized I said OJT really funny there. But, you know, looking for those types of opportunities to assist that company. In the business service rep, you know, um, they know about the jobs in the areas. They have job leads. Anytime I go out to an event, and I know every rapid response practitioner probably does the same thing, they have in their back pocket a list of job leads from the open job ads. You know, they're at least similar to the people they're dealing with. So when you get the notice, when you're talking to a company, you find out what are the positions impacted. Well, you want to be able to walk in there, and it's almost like having your mini job fair. You have your leads, you mention them, you know, and say, this is what we have available. And the great thing about that is you're going to get feedback from the workers then. And this is where your active listening comes in. So when you tell the workers about the jobs, they're going to be telling you, well, I don't like this or I don't want this. And you're starting to get a pulse of your people out there. So having that is helpful. And then also the DCO Red Team. Um, the DCO Red Team offers incentives and tax credits. And that's the thing out there for businesses. Even if you're not aware of last, if you're talking to a company, it's good to be able to know your DCO Red Team member and be able to make that referral. So when you think about layoff versions business centric, it may not be working with a company that has laid off, but it's be able to identify the opportunities that exist out there for the workers that have been laid off and for the businesses out there as well. So I want to continue on. I want to talk about, um, this is one of my favorite things to talk about is questions you should be asking dislocated workers. And just one moment. So when you're doing meetings, uh, you should be doing your best to identify any opportunities that exist out there. And you can learn a lot from dislocated workers, and this is where the word of mouth comes in and the power of it. So when talking to people who have been laid off, as I'm casually talking to them, you know, I ask that you tried or and failed at applying for a job recently. So I'm trying to find out, are there jobs people are applying for they just can't get? Those are the opportunities to think about OJT, because OJT, what you're doing is you're taking a person that's not qualified for a job and making an agreement with the employer to train them. So there's one way to find an additional OJT opportunity. Um, when I'm talking to people that have been laid off, especially larger companies, I ask them, well, do you know anyone that you worked with that maybe got a job somewhere else? If they have, there is an opportunity for talent transfer. Maybe they want to bring in workers. Maybe they need to come to worker training. You know, someone's hiring. So that makes you make another connection to another company that opens a door. And so you can also talk to them if you're talking to people, hey, does anybody you work with, are there any kind of training programs sponsored by the company? Were there any training programs sponsored by the company? It kind of helps you identify. You often find companies have training programs are in. The company might cease to operate. And so they're kind of in a break. So it'd be great if LWS could pick up that training to make sure they don't lose that training opportunity. It's just identifying that opportunity. But also ask, you know, it's good to find out if there's any apprenticeships that are currently working for the company. You might find that there's schools that have apprenticeship programs, maybe aren't exactly employed by the employer, but they're impacted in another way. If the LWE could pick up and take over those apprenticeship programs, that's a win for the customer and the companies and the LWE. And also it's good to know just 
how are people talking about the layoffs? How they're staying in contact? Um, you often find, I find this too when I'm out in the field, when people are laid off and it's a large group, they talk. And they have social media channels. So find out about those social media channels, be able to find out opportunities. If you have a success with one person, ask them to tell another person, hey, tell them about this on Facebook, you know, and just find out, you know, what's exactly going on. And also knowing about what kind of social media channels exist might help you find information later if it's valuable to document. And so the question comes, so how do I document this? Well, you can document this information in edits. So I have a scenario here that I just want to quickly go over, and then I can open it up to some questions. So in this layoff, of this, it's going to be called the Layoff Aversion Test Company, okay? And here's the scenario. We have this company, and they laid off 45 employees on December 12th. You as the OE identified 15 open positions at another company and worked with an employee representative. Test Company B is now hiring 15 employees. So what do I do? I think that's the last slide. So if that's the case, we're talking about how can I show we averted 15 layoffs. So if you log in and you go to one second, search, you go to your company. So we're talking about layoff version test company, and you can see we have the 45 layoffs. If you open this up, we can go to our schedule and you're able to edit the schedule to show what's actually going on. And so if I press edit, I come down here, 15 reverted, I'm gonna make sure I document that by showing that layoff number should now reflect 30. When you say this, it's gonna ask for a note. So it's important to document this because you're gonna need this information for later. I'm gonna show you how you can kind of gather that information and kind of see your library of best practices. So for the subject, my recommendation is to put layoffs averted. So if you come to an event later, you can quickly see that's the note for that. And for documentation type, my recommendation is to put it as layoff changes. And so you may make a quick note documenting what happened. And I think before I simply put something like LEO worked with an employee representative to transfer those positions. You can also add further information about who that contact was, more details about it. But for this purpose, we're just going to make a quick document here. But you'd want to put as much information as possible. So if someone else who did not work on it comes back later and reads it, it would make total sense to them. And so I'm going to save that. So I want to show you a couple things on this page. So now with this company, we can see there's a layoff date, the 1212 we talked about earlier. The expected layoff still shows 45, but here's our revised layoff number 30. So now we're seeing this company has had a positive impact by your efforts. And you can see in the notes, if someone wanted to come back and read it, they can find your layoff subverted subject and quickly read that note. How this helps you, if you're in your LWEA and you come to the search page, there's a couple of columns here. There's expected layoff and revised layoff. And you can see positive or negative changes here. So you can see this one expected 45, this one that was expected 30. Down here with NatPod manufacturing, you can see there was 150 expected, 50 layoffs. And if I clicked in this, if I was curious, well, what happened here? I could come to the notes. And if they document it, which they did, layoff or version, I'm going to go quickly and read this. And it looks like the business service rep worked with the LWEA to conduct a job fair with recruiters from local companies, hired a hundred laid off workers. Information gathered from recruiters and self-reported by the customers. When I mentioned social media earlier, if you happen to get on those channels, you'll usually see people talking about the jobs they got. I got this job, I worked here. That's helpful for you for job leads, but also to know, okay, this is what's going on. These people are actually getting jobs with our efforts. So it just kind of helps you stay in tune. And you would just document your note here. And going back to the top, just to show you, there was expected to be 150 layoffs, the revised was 50. So that's how you can quickly look. Uh, the idea with this concept of building our best practices, if we have enough wins out there and we have heard enough layoffs, if we continue to document these in ebbs, we'll almost have a training system and go back to and look over what has happened. 
pull a report and see, okay, who started to look more layoffs and layoffs got reduced to help give us ideas and help continue building best practices. Um, I know that was a lot and we really haven't had many, you know, frank layoff dis version discussions, but I guess now, Dee, should we open up to any questions or comments or see if there's anything from the field? Because I think this is one that really is discussion driven a little bit. So who would like to ask a question or start a question discussion point about layoff aversion? Any takers, Cindy, Kristen, <laughs> Trevor? I don't know that I necessarily have any questions, um, but you write the, uh, the thought process when you hear layoff aversion is immediately to slip into that mindset of, Okay, I'm going to stop this company from laying off. Well, no, <laughs> you're not, um, especially if you don't hear about it till after the fact. So, um, but I liked the idea of documenting when you're talking to a group of people that are facing layoff and saying, hey, let's have a, a job fair here on site, or have you heard about these job opportunities? Um, yeah, that can help. Right, Cindy. Helps one or two. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I mean, every layoff you avert is helpful to community that you serve. Uh, even small community, like Streeter, if they lay off 100 people from a factory, that's a huge impact on that. And if you can do anything to help keep those workers there locally, that's ideal. And I think that's where layoff aversion comes in because oftentimes the disconnect is there's companies that have jobs available, but they're not finding qualified work, which are not liking who they got. I think that's where we can fill the gap in a lot of ways. That's what we do. And we got that big carrot to dangle with all that money. And I think identifying opportunities is the best way. And I feel like it starts at the customer level and just hearing what they're hearing. Um, there are those misconceptions, you know, and I think that's one of the problems we're having when it comes to left version is everything we're hearing about is driven by some of those misconceptions. So hopefully we start here come around and do this later with a bigger audience and try to start a bigger discussion. Yeah, and, and I think it does, like you said, have to start at the participant or the job seeker level, because if we don't have the job seeker, if we can't get them documented that we helped them, then you know we miss out on those performance numbers. If they just leap from employer to the next one and it never gets recorded that they were in contact with us to make that leap, we lose out on those numbers. That's a good point. And in this current job market, it doesn't, you know, too many people can jump really quickly. And I heard on the news the other day that the unemployment number is still extremely low. And I don't know if that takes into account all the people that maybe stop looking or are doing gig employment or are doing consulting work. The, the jobs, people are still having problems filling jobs. And so if there's open jobs available in the area where your layoff is happening, I think that's a huge advantage if you can get somebody into another job right away. Even if it might not be in their field, another job is better than unemployment in a lot of cases. Right. And that's where the concept of OJT comes in, because typically that's underqualified. And I think that's something we're dealing with right now. And businesses do need a helping hands in a lot of ways. Um, they're really confused about what they want. Often, I mean, anyone who's ever had a response, you look at job ads, I want five years experience, I want a bachelor's, I want this, and it's for a cashier, you know, it's be realistic, you know, so that's where I think workforce development can really come in and help these businesses by saying, hey, we have government resources to offer, please use them, you know, please help the people, but it starts at understanding worker needs, you know, that's why you talk to them, what jobs are you applying for, what are you trying to do, what do you actually want to do, you know, things like that. And so just getting out there talking and, and listening to people. Right. Kristen, Trevor, want to add anything to the discussion? We'll address this topic again later, but 
Right. And I guess that's the thing. So, Cindy, I mean, do you think it's worthwhile for us just as a one person to continue trying to do content like this with more? What do we want to do? And I'm offended by nothing, so you can say no, it's up to <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it's a good topic. Because even, you know, we got somebody new to rapid response. They definitely need the information. And for those of us that have been in the thick of it for way longer than you want to admit, <laughs> uh, the, it, it's good to have the reminders. Right. Like a lot of this isn't fresh ideas. It's just, you know, hey, open a discussion and talk about what we do. Right. All right. Well, if there's no further discussion, we will adjourn today and we'll meet again on February 14th on Valentine's Day. Ooh. Let's see how we can tie our topic into love. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Thanks, you too.